everybody, I'm Zach. And I'm not Jesse. And you're watching In Depth. Or Out of Our Depth. On Now You Know. All right, so uh, Steven's with us this week. And uh, where's Jesse? He's at space camp right now. So uh decided to fill in, take take the reins for a moment. And yeah. Excellent. Hi. Well, well, thank you. Good to be here, as always. So this week we're doing our episode of In-Depth on Consumer Reports' latest findings about the Model 3. They could not recommend the car yet because of one seemingly major issue, which is braking distance. So on May 21st, Lance Ulanoff tweeted to Elon. He said, response in 321... And then he posted this link to a CNN article about the Consumer Reports finding, and Elon got back to him. The Consumer Reports breaking results is inconsistent with other reviewers, but might indicate that some Model 3s have longer braking distances than others. If so, we will address this at our expense. First time we've seen anything like this. So that is interesting. We were kind of surprised by this, that Elon's basically implying that they can somehow change the braking distance of the Model 3 through software. In their testing, uh, Consumer Reports got the result of 152 feet. And as Consumer Reports pointed out, that's seven feet further than a Ford F-150 pickup truck. Consumer Reports claims they tested this using the original Model 3 that they bought from Tesla in January, which by our estimates would make it what, like? What? Around 2,000 okay. for the production number. Okay. And then they also, because they found this result, they figured we'd probably should use a second car. They borrowed basically a friend's car and they got a similar result. Tesla stated, Tesla's own testing has found braking distances with an average of 133 feet when conducting the 60 to zero mile per hour stops using the 18 inch Michelin all season tire and as low as 126 feet with all tires currently available. Stopping distance results are affected by variables such as road surface, weather conditions, tire temperature, braking conditions, outside temperature, and past driving behavior that may have affected the brake system. Unlike other vehicles, Tesla is uniquely positioned to address more corner cases over time through over-the-air software updates, and it continually does so to improve factors such as stopping distance. All right, this is a big deal. So let's break this down. So I guess my first question is, uh, Model 3 brakes are different than pretty much any other car's brakes out there. How do the Model 3 brakes work? According to the Tesla VP of Engineering, Chris Poor, the Model 3 uses electromechanical brakes rather than a vacuum brake booster. The resistance under your foot comes from the resistance of a spring and electric motor. So when you take your foot off the accelerator, the drive motor immediately begins taking energy from the momentum of the car and turning it back into electricity, which gets stored in the battery. Then when you put your foot on the brake pedal, a computer takes the input of the amount of pressure you're applying with your foot and translates it into the amount of pressure the brake pads should apply to the four disc brakes. So why would the Model 3 have a longer stopping distance than the Ford F-150? So Consumer Reports claims that in their tests of the Ford F-150 that had a stopping distance of about 145 feet, and that's seven feet shorter than the Model 3. One factor in the stopping of a moving vehicle is the vehicle's weight, and the Tesla Model 3 has a curb weight of about 3,814 pounds, and that's about the same weight as the Ford F-150, which weighs about 4,069 pounds. So basically, Tesla talked about in their statement all the other factors that go into this, but the big one, I think, is the key component appears to be the anti-lock brake system. Um, and there's an anti-lock brake controller or an ABS controller. So the ABS controller is pretty important, right? Um, yeah. There's a sensor on every wheel. Yeah, it sends out a pulse signal 15 times a second. Okay, so if the wheel is accelerating, what does it do? It's applying pressure and to then, slow it down. Okay, and then if it senses that the wheel is deaccelerating, that means it's, it's locked. Take, yes, it's locked and it wants to take that pressure And so pressure it pulls pressure away. So it's just continually doing this to make sure, and it's sensing what it should be right, doing. Right, the goal is the so that it doesn't, it doesn't, doesn't lock slide. Up. Yeah. We decided to test the Model 3 stopping distance ourselves. Now, obviously, we don't have a test track, but we do have a Model 3, and we have a flat, dry surface. So let's see what our results are. So here's some footage. Uh, Jesse and I went out, and we did four runs, two with me behind the wheel, two with Jesse behind the wheel and we averaged our results and just so you know we first did some test runs and we had a lot of trouble pressing on the brake at the point that we thought we should press on the brake we tended to do it early so we set up the fusion camera so that we could see the exact second that our foot moved over from the accelerator to the brake and so we got our results about i would say within a foot or two each time and then we averaged them so here's what we got our first test was 149.75 feet second test was 137 feet 
third test was 137 feet, and the fourth test was 148.75 feet. So that averages 143.125 feet. Yeah, I do want to point out that, uh, you know, we weren't on a test track. Um, we were actually testing at 83 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 10 degrees warmer than what Consumer Reports was testing. We were using 19-inch wheels instead of the 18-inch wheels that they were using. We were using Continental tires. They were using Michelin tires. So, I mean, you can see there's some differences here, but in general, we were... I think those were pretty good real world uh, results. Now, I thought there was a couple interesting things. On my first test, I didn't uh, press the brakes as hard as I could have. Um, I was a little bit gentler and I did not lock anything up. On my second test, I pressed down a lot harder. I remember getting a little bit of lockage in the very beginning of the run and then it slowed down as it should. Jesse did his two tests and he pressed really hard. And as you can see here from the footage, he locked up. He's getting up to 60. Now he's hitting the brake. Uh, he said that he didn't remember any, feeling any of that traditional pulse that you feel. Um, like he said that he's felt in his leaf when he really slams on his brakes. So my guess here is that we laid down a lot of rubber, like we locked up. And so my guess here is that Tesla's going to be able to, if they can somehow get their ABS controller to work better, they're going to be able to improve this result probably pretty dramatically. All that the Tesla needs to do here is just improve the ABS so that it doesn't lock up as much because you lose braking distance when the tires are locking up. So how can Tesla improve the braking distance with software? So over the air update, simply what they can do is they can take the ABS and actually have a better control on it. Every time that we were doing our tests, I mean, I was even more ruthless than you two were, um, we found that we were always getting the anti-lock brake to actually fail. And we were skidding all over the place. Mm -hmm. So as long as Tesla can get a better control on what's going on with the ABS, problem solved. So you're saying this is software, they can actually tell that there's a little computer in the car yeah. that's that's taking the sensor data and it's manipulating that data and it's probably just manipulating it wrong. You can fine tune the sensor so that it will not lock up as much as it was doing with us. Interesting. So it can take like how much pressure you're applying and and do different things with that. Correct. So lastly, if Tesla can do this, if they can shorten the stopping distance with a software update, why would this be a disruption to the auto industry? Because who else can do that right now? Yeah, that's this a, is this is something that this is where Tesla leads the way in innovation. I mean, as not only a car company but a technology company, the fact that you're able to take something and over the air without bringing it into a service center, you can have it solved. That's mind blowing. Yeah, I mean, because most cars out in the road, you buy that model year and that's it. You're not going to get any improvements. Nope. If even if there was some <laughs> way to fix that. ABS controller. You can go to the dealership. Right. So you'd bring it into your dealer. They'd have to physically plug it in probably or maybe ch change a chip or something. If you wanted to do a whole year's worth of that model, it would cost them millions of dollars and take months to do. Here, we're talking about an update that literally probably takes an hour. And then now your car the next day can do something that it couldn't do the day before. Right now, Tesla's can update its nav system, its entertainment system, it can do you know autopilot updates, all these things over the Every air. Every month, I feel like our vehicles are getting some new improvement to them. So Consumer Reports came out with a video a couple days ago that showed, uh, they, they talked about their results, and they said that they had an hour-long conversation with Elon about this problem, and that Elon, in that phone conversation, said that he's going to put his engineers to work, and that hopefully by the time you're watching this video, he will have come up with a solution that he's going to send to Consumer Reports, and, and I think from what we've heard from Tesla today, they're going to be sending out that over the air in the next couple of weeks to all Model 3 owners. Um, so as soon as we get that update, we're going to go out and test it ourselves. So we're going to have to wait and see if the Tesla engineers have really been able to do it and shorten that braking distance, right? So I mean, this is exciting news because uh, we've learned a lot in our first test. Um, we should be able to even do a better, you know, we'll be able to film it better um, for our second test. And it'll be just interesting to see if we're going to get real world results that are better than what we just got today. And I just, I just want to point out that, I mean, Consumer Reports got a lot of headlines, and unfortunately, a lot of people, the only takeaway they're going to have from this is Tesla Model 3 doesn't get the Consumer Report recommendation. But if you read the entire Consumer <laughs> Report report, it was actually pretty positive. It was talking about tremendous handling, uh, the amazing quickness of the car. Um, there's so many positive things the about the car. The only downsides they gave it were the braking, the back seat, and the wind noise, which I can agree with the other two. I mean, yeah. those are... but. What backseat of a vehicle have you sat in it? You're like, oh, this is nice. Right. It's, it's... And and you're not going to stop from recommending a car based on the backseat. I mean, no, that's not going to that's not going to ruin it for right. you. It's it's unfortunate. You're going to fight for shotgun. Exactly. But I mean, like, no, because the, the angle is pretty weird. It I is. will say, and I will say, the wind noise comparatively to the cars in its class, like they're going to compare it to an A4, they're going to compare it to a BMW 3 Series. 
they do have a considerably quieter cabin. So, I mean, you guys should go watch our episode we did where we tested the noise levels in the Model 3, the Model X, and a Honda Civic. And although we did find that the Model 3 wasn't as quiet as the Model X, it was right in line with like the Honda Civic. In fact, it was a little quieter. I mean, that's not an A4, that's not a BMW 3 Series, so I can understand that some people want to put it in that class and say that it should be quieter. And I do agree with you. I yeah. think it's something they can improve. It's, it's insulation. It's, it's something that can easily be changed for the next... Just I mean, Tesla's known for making those improvements to the production line. If right. something isn't right, they're going to fix it. Right. And I mean, the $35,000 car is going to be just as quiet as the pimped out you know, premium package car. Right. I mean, for us, we had a pre-production Model 3 and we had a charge port issue that has already been solved. That's right. So it's pretty impressive to see like the changes that are already evolving. So thank you so much for watching, everybody, this episode. I'd love to see your comments about uh, the braking distance on the Model 3. And please stay tuned to this channel because obviously we're going to be testing as the new software update comes out. Don't forget to subscribe and like. And don't forget to watch Tesla Time News on Tuesday. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Now, now you, you know. know. Well, that was consistent.